This is what you get when you get a new M215 inverter. The first four digits of the serial number are most important because that'll tell you the year it was made and distributed. This inverter was bought on eBay, advertised as brand new. I got the serial number, called up Enphase, they confirmed that it was never registered. So this serial number of 20, the year 2020 tells me that a year to 16 months of the 25-year warran warranty is already used, which is not bad for what I paid for the unit. As I said, you only get three pieces here. These connections are all that you're going to be making on the unit with those wires. This connection goes to the solar panel. The groove prevents it from being reversed. There's markings on the unit and you cannot make a mistake. It cannot be inverted wrong. These are for the solar panel connections. This is the module that connects the inverter to the railing where all the converters run together. Before you even attempt to do a 215 change, you will need this special tool. These little clips here are how you take apart the old solar connections. You take the tool, don't forget the other connection is together here, and you will push this onto the joint to the point that it seats fully. Come on. Once you have it on the joint correctly, either this side is what I needed, the fat ones, not the thin ones, then you can wiggle and jiggle the connection apart. You do both of them with this tool. This other end is for the rail. You will note there's an arrow on one side and the spot where it plugs in has its own arrow. You must line the two arrows up when you're putting the new connections together. But otherwise, you take the tool, insert it on the bottom, push it up into the unit on the rail, that'll hold the pins open, and then you jiggle the entire unit and break the connection. The bolts that hold everything together are stainless steel, eight millimeter, 1.25 threaded hex bolts. You will need a special six, this is a six millimeter hex socket. Now, depending upon your installer, a one quarter inch drive will not work because those clowns tighten them up so much, even an adapter going to three eighths will not work. They zap my unit down so tight one of, the bolt, one of the bolts I had to get out, an air gun. Because I think they stripped the threads on it. Three of them I could break loose. With the three ace drives and the six millimeter hex head socket. A one quarter inch will not do it. You should also bring up some liquid wrench on the roof with you. Spray the threads, carefully take the bolt, back the bolts out. 
they'll they'll come loose, but you're gonna have a have to fight with the dirt and moisture, little corrosion. I took the uh, end fittings out first, and actually took them down to the garage, wire brushed them down, and put a little oil on them, so it would make assembly easier. Once you get your tools and everything up on the roof, you take off the end clips, back them out of the track. Now you've already loosened the connections on the middle going to the next panel. You don't remove those though. You leave them where they are loose and you slide the panel towards yourself a little bit to make them clear and then you raise the end of the panel and put supports under it so now you can work on the inverter. You can see the panel wires have been disconnected already with that special tool just by laying it in on the side of the fittings and jiggling them apart. This is the inverter and it's still wired in to the main module on the track. This is after you use that special tool under the connection, push it all the way in and you grab the tool and the socket here and jiggle them both out till you get it disconnected. Now all you have to do is unbolt the dead inverter and prepare to bolt on a new one. This is what my end clips look like. You break that eight millimeter bolt loose with the six millimeter hex head socket Back it off just a little bit. You, you don't have to go all the way. Once you get it loose, you jiggle that and work it towards you. Take the, take the entire unit out of the track in one piece. You do not leave the, uh, the piece in the track. Disconnect the entire thing and pull it out. These are my brackets where two panels are joined together. The head of the bolt is recessed. So you'll never be able to grab this with the vice grips. This is one that they cross threaded on me and I needed the impact gun for. While you have the end clamps out, I recommend cleaning them up. Take them down to your garage, wire brush, take them apart 100%. Wire brush the threads and before reassembly even put a little oil on them, on the threads of the bolt. Then take them back up and get ready to reassemble. Here's a better view of that tool installed on one of the connections going to the solar panel. It, it mounts on both sides and pushes the clips in and then you grab the entire connection and jiggle the two ends apart. And then you repeat the same process over here with this one. The clips are on the other piece, on the other connection piece on this one though, but the fitting goes on exactly the same way. When I did my first unit, uh, as soon as I connected the solar panel, there's an LED light on the side of the inverter that actually came on green. I said, holy moly, this thing's live already. But it wasn't because I had the power shut off. I finished the connections, went down, turned it on, phoned up Enphase, gave them the serial number of the new inverter. They programmed it into the office and voila, everything was up and running. Now this time, the new one didn't work that way. When I hooked the new inverter up, I was getting a blinking red light. The same LED light will blink red or orange, solid red or green. Well, I was getting a red blinking light, so I called up Enphase and asked them what was going on. Turns out, after two, after one unsuccessful try at getting it to kick in, because it sat in a box and didn't get installed for about 18 months, 16, 18 months, the computer inside needed to be updated. So once the second rep 
fed it the new info, she got up and running and no problem. So you can buy brand new on eBay. Just make sure that the serial number has never been registered. It's no big deal unless your installer tightened them, over torqued them, like my guy did. There is no reason why I needed an impact wrench up there. It's like the guy in the auto parts, auto tire place that tightens your lugs up so tight that you cannot get the tire off when you have a flat tire on the road. All right, gang. I didn't know what I was doing the first time. I'm learning as I go, but it is not that difficult of a job as long as you have the right tools. The special disconnect tool, a 3 8 drive, 6 millimeter hex socket, and a can of liquid wrench. It's not a difficult job at all. Just be careful on the roof.